previously on the Death Saving Bros podcast. So you're headed north out of South Salt. The Hammerbottom brothers know each other, but you have just met the bard Dosh Johnson and Revan Dawn Treader. What are you doing? Why are you Why are you coming with us? I figured this would be interesting. Uh, prox- somewhere between two and three days to get from South Salt to Nashpura, winding along the river called the Red River. Uh... Oh, no! (laughs) No! Oh, no. (laughs) All right, Orange River, a human, makes his way over to you and introduces himself as Desmond. Did you hear about those crazy murders that happened? The orcs are coming down from the salt mines. All I'm trying to say is orcs are orcs. All orcs are savages. And yet you're hanging out with these half-orcs. No offense. Hey, fuck yourself. Half-orcs, that means a half is bad. (laughs) Uh, I walk away. You should probably watch yourselves. The halfling approaches you. Well, excuse me, what's your name, ma'am? My name's Taylor. Taylor, huh? I walk away. (laughs) He was telling me that the orcs were attacking people in South Salt, but I heard that it was the crow's heads. The orcs are peaceful people. They have lots of tribes up in the mountains. You guys hit the road again, and within a day, you reach Nashpura. We're here to find fucking Roscoe, so let's go to the casino. I know where it is. Follow me. Everybody is trying to get into this building, festooned with baubles and lanterns. The crow's head, the crow's head, the finest establishment in the city of Nashpura. I think we found a crow's head. Yeah, it's a pretty happening place. Good times, for the most part. Dash, listen, before we get up there and start dealing with these people, is there any reason you can think of why they sent people to kill you. It's random, I swear. Like, we can trust you if, like, it comes down to it? Uh, you know, did a job for them, did a job for someone else, and now they're butthurt. No weapons are allowed in the crow's head. Don't worry, we'll ticket all your items, you'll get them back. We're gonna walk up to the VIP section. I head over to the bounce by the back door, pat him on the shoulder, and say I'm here to see Vasco and walk in. He immediately lets you through. I walk up to the guy, pat him on the shoulder, say, how are you now? Refrain from touching me. This is for paid members only. Dosh walks up to the uh, bouncer. He snaps his fingers, and suddenly two of his assistants grab you by their arms and pull back your hood. I thought that was you, Dosh. Roscoe's going to want to talk to you. Well, that's why I came here. Hey, hey, what's this business now? Oh, you're an associate of Dosh's, are you? We'll We'll have a nice long discussion in the back. And you are ushered into the back. Seated at the table is a burly man with a uh, a pot belly talking to Revan. Well, 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 this is gonna be fun. Oh, you dick. Welcome to another episode of the Death Saving Bros Podcast. I am your dungeon master, Paul Camper. With me tonight, I have Ben Renfro. How's everyone doing today? I've got Brad Richards. That was the most loud, obnoxious <laughs> shit I've ever heard in my life. Oh I've my god. I've got Matt Smith. Howdy doody. And last but not least, Eric Nemeth. Hey, what's up everyone? Uh, we are a an actual play 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons podcast. This is our third episode. If you're uh, just tuning in, why don't we go ahead and introduce our characters and give a quick description. I don't know if we've done that yet, but give a quick description of what your character looks like. Ben? Okay, so my character is Brixia's hammer bottom. My bad. It's been a few weeks since we played, so I had to try to remember what I have told you guys. But from my understanding, and as far as I can remember, I'm a handsome, and let me just say, I'm a handsome hel- hat, 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 half orc. And I'm sorry, I, I have a stutter problem now. I, I don't know when, it just started like probably about a year ago, and I stutter like daily now. But I'm a handsome looking half orc, and uh, I don't know, I would say my guy's pretty toned, like really toned if you ask me. And I'm not the tallest half orc, you know. For a half orc, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little short. 
But in general, I'm a good-looking half-orc, and my guy's a badass, and I have a brother who's also a badass, and yeah, now my brother's going to introduce himself. Hi, I'm Ambionitis Hammerbottom. I'm the taller brother of us. I'm a very toned and dark and handsome half-orc. I mean, I am a very toned and ha 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 Ha, ha, handsome, ha, half orc. <laughs> You're an asshole. <laughs> Just trying to support my brother. Mr. Long, tan and handsome. handsome. And yeah, I like hitting things with the head what of my wearing? hammer. What are you wearing? A silk <laughs> pajama bottom. Actually, that's false. If I did have that, that'd be nice. I'm wearing normal barbarian clothes. By that, I mean, you know, like pants and a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> all right um matt smith your character and what you look like all right um dosh johnson i'm a half elf bard so i guess kind of short kind of skinny rocking a uh sweet tom Selleck style mustache and i guess that's about it that's all you need to know all right and eric nemeth i'm Robin don Treader. i am a tall high elf I am drop dead gorgeous, and since I'm an elf, I look better than everyone else. That's just obvious. And I'm wearing some very sexy scale armor with a cloak <laughs> over top of it. Everybody seems to be handsome <laughs> and drop dead gorgeous in, in this group. Hell yeah! Tom Selleck, <laughs> half orc supermodels, and an elven dignitary. I don't know, whatever. So when we last left our group, um, actually, you know what? Let me get one of you to give me the recap. Nose goes. I volunteer as tribute. <laughs> you volunteer as tribute? <laughs> yeah, Yeah, because I'm we know honest. Eric's going to lose that one with this horrible lag. And we know Eric's just going to butcher the <clears throat> entire thing anyway. So. I don't want Ben to do it because I want to get through this in a, at least an hour. Well, thank you, Ben. <laughs> I'm not talk- ben, first off, went after you. I went after Ben for oh. you. So you know what? You need to calm down, tough guy. <laughs> Okay. Um. So we. Okay. Wait. When am I refer? Like, where am I starting from? I mean, we only, we've only got two episodes under our belt. I think you could do everything if you really wanted to. Salt. Okay. We started in <laughs> Salt Mine Valley, uh, which is where me and Brixius grew up in the valley. Your valley girls. Something about Nashboro. Oh, South Salt is to the south because salt of the south. Yeah. So. We uh we were in uh uh Nashburg. yeah, we were in Nashburg. some asshole came out of the crowd and uh asked us about the crow's head. So while no. we were standing there Yeah, no, no no no, this this happened. So while we were standing there we just found the musician. We're no, so that ha- was in South Salt. Oh well You guys grew up outside of Nashburg and then headed down to South Salt. Yeah, that's what I meant. So we found a musician uh, we befriended him, and then we fought an elf, which oddly enough became our friend again. And then we fought and murdered more people that were people that worked for some guy named Roscoe and the Crow's Heads or some shit. Yeah. So we tracked him down and uh, got into their den and, you know, infiltrated that real, like, real not subtle style, like very not stealthy Pretty sure we just barged in there. Um, and then, oh, we met someone named Taylor along the way. <laughs> yeah, Fuck, you guys love Taylor. Fucking Taylor. <laughs> Ambionitis, Brixius, Dosh Johnson, and what the fuck's his name? Raven? Revin. Revin. And then there's fucking Taylor. <laughs> just put that in perspective for a second. <laughs> fucking Taylor. So then finally we get to... Uh, Nashbara, or wherever the fuck we were going, and then we got seized, and then we found Roscoe. We tried to break into his casino, and that didn't work. And then it turns out, I think Revan is working with Roscoe, and he's about to get a boot in his ass. So, yeah. <laughs> Three boots all up <laughs> in his ass. Yeah. So, you guys are in the back of the Crow's Head Casino Gambling Den. It looks like a warehouse back there. There are shelves upon shelves of boxes and books and all manner of 
grains and foodstuffs. Basically, everything the casino needs, it's back here. And sitting on, a, resting against the table is a burly, pot-bellied man. And sitting in front of him is your elven friend, Revan. And you, Brixius, Ambionitis, and Dosh, are all being ushered into this warehouse area by six of the casino bouncers. And as you walk in, uh, Roscoe looks up and says, Oh, would you look at this? I've got Dosh, the source of all my trouble. I've got two oh. unknowns who look like they're going to be trouble. And I've got Revan, who I sent to fix the trouble. This is going to be fun. And he waves his hand, uh, which has many rings on it. And he stands up from his seat at the table and walks around to sit down at a chair. The guards push you guys from behind, and Roscoe says, Come on, take a seat. Let's have a little chat. And he sits down in his own chair. Quick question. We gave up our weapons when we went into this um, yeah. place, right? Yeah. All right. Just want to double check. Uh, Guess I'll pop a squat. Uh, I sit down. All right. You all sit down willingly. Yeah. Respectfully. Yeah, respectfully. Roscoe says, well, that's good to know that uh, we can all get along here. Wouldn't want to have to ask my boys to get unfriendly. Wait, hold on. Can I fix my bat wings real quick before I get comfortable? Bat wings? Yeah. Is this your character speaking or is this you speaking? This is my character speaking. Come on, Roscoe, you know you've got bat wings before when you sit down. Oh. <laughs> For those of you... Roscoe, Roscoe says, yeah, whatever. All right, so I stand up and do a quick hip rotation and shake those bad boys free, and then I sit back down. <laughs> he asks, are you comfortable? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I throw Excellent. my feet up on the table, lean back in the chair, and say, very comfortable. Thank you. Hey, feet down. Asshole. So, you two half-orc, yeah, you are you look a little similar, you brothers. That's racist. <laughs> Dosh, I, did I ask you? I'm just saying. I'm a little offended by... You're offended. <laughs> I'm offended that you would have the audacity to come back in this place. I'll get I'll get to you, so just <laughs> shut up and sit tight for a second. Is it because we're I'm both a, I'm green? I'm talking to you half-orcs. <laughs> Is it because we're both green? Shut up. Stop being disrespectful. Mother didn't teach you this way. Hey, mother's a saint. You don't bring her into this. Yes, we're brothers. <laughs> Sorry for my uh, brother. All right, brother. and what are you doing here? What do you have to do with Dosh? That's a really good question. You know, we met him. We had a jam sesh with him. And then, uh, yeah, I, I don't know why we're here. It's a really Nothing great... Nothing breaks the bond of a jam sesh. Great question. Okay. Yes, we bonded a little bit over our jam session, and we were walking with him somewhere when he got jumped, so we just had his back because, from what we knew, there was nothing wrong with the guy. So... Proceeding from there, we murdered him. We are here now. All right, and uh, Revan, I'm here because you got your goons who went my way. So I'm trying to figure out why you sent me and a bunch of random guys to get in my way. You know, you never put all your eggs in one basket, Revan. You are a bounty hunter. I've got my men doing my their thing, and I've got you doing your thing. Whoever comes back first gets the extra payday. Would have been nice getting a heads up about this. It would have been nice if you had finished the job. And Dosh. Yes? So, <laughs> you willingly walked yourself back into my door. Mm-hmm. What do you have to say for yourself? You knew what you were doing when you sold that information to Wilhelmina, to Billy. Yep, and you know what I do for a living, so you shouldn't be so butthurt about it. You know, I thought there was a little honor amongst thieves. It's just information. People come for it. I sell it to them. Well, just so you <laughs> know, you have cost us hundreds, if not thousands. Your little stint <laughs> might put us out of business. It seems like your business wasn't that set in stone to begin with, if that's all it took. If Wilhelmina goes and buys <laughs> her own brothel... She's got all of our secrets. She's got all of our contacts. All she has to do is poach it from us. So, <laughs> the question is now what to do about you. And now that you half-orc brothers... That's us. What were your names? Brixius and Ambionitis is my brother here. 
Brixius and Ambionitis, that, those are some fancy-ass names for some half-orcs. Or some fancy-ass half-orcs, what's it to you? What's it to Well, the you? question is, now that you've heard everything that goes on here, what to do with you? I wasn't listening, I swear. And then Revan, you already knew about this. Why'd you, why'd you come back empty-handed? Because if you guys were interfering with me, I want to tell you keep them out of my fucking path. Goddamn humans. Bold words for a man that doesn't deliver. Got him. Here's what I'm going to offer. Here's what I'm going to offer you boys. You can either take my offer, or when I leave, that offer leaves with me. You got it? I'm listening. Dosh. Well, I'm sitting here. I heard what you said. Ah, I like it. Uh, good one. So, Wilhelmina is a thorn in our side. She had the audacity to take her knowledge, her expertise, that we gave her, and she's now trying to go behind our backs and then go and start her own competing business. The Crow's Heads run this town. We run this valley, and she's trying to put a stop to that. So my offer to you is take Wilhelmina out of the question, and we're square. Do you want us to murder a female? I just want you to take her out of the equation. So you want us to murder a female? I want you to take her out of the equation. Is an option <laughs> murdering a female? If that's the option that you choose, then I suppose that takes her out of the equation. Consider it done. <laughs> Putting a bound, a hit on your own cousin. She's not my cousin. Why do I have that in the... Wait, this is the Paul as Dungeon Master? Yeah, what's up? Yeah, I have your email. Yeah, okay, like... I have your email. It says, I'm tracking your cousin, Wilhelm... Vasco Coltrane's cousin, Wilhelmina Jean. Really? I do not remember writing that. Okay. Whoops. How do you spell Wilhelmina? W-I-L-H-E-M-I-N-A. Holy shit, no, shit I, I guess. got that right, and I guess fuck yes. <laughs> okay, um, well, I suppose, yeah, I'm putting a hit on my own cousin. Gasp. Okay, she's dead. Well then, and he gestures with his many-ringed hand in a wide-sweeping arc, and he gives a very sleazy smile to... To you, he says, my associates will show you to the door. Cool. I expect results within the week. Just one question. <laughs> I, 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 I hesitate to ask, Dosh. <laughs> what? Do you ever accidentally cut your own balls when you go to scratch them with that many rings in your hand? <laughs> <laughs> That's a valid question right there. That I need sounds to like too. pretty relevant information. I want to know. Cause that, that seems like kind of a kind of an inconvenience, to be honest. I'm just I'm just saying. He just stands up and uh, pushes in his chair and says, "Good day, gentlemen." And then he walks out onto the casino floor, leaving you with his associates. He never answered the question. He just doesn't want to admit he has a slashed up scrotum right now. <laughs> <laughs> um. So the associates, um, the bouncers. Walk up and say, gentlemen, if you'll follow us to the door, we'll, we'd like to have you go out the back entrance this time. That's perfectly fine. Back I entrance is back always entrance. a good place to go. The bouncers uh, gather around you. There are two in front, four in back. And they start leading you through the stacks of boxes and crates. And one of them steps forward to open up the door. And he falls backwards. Uh, what's everybody's passive perception? Yeah, it's 10 plus uh, your wisdom modifier. 11. 12. 12. Uh, it's 11. Okay. Um, those of you with 12 uh, happen to notice that there is a dart through the bouncer's eye. Oh, shit. Wow. And then the doors explode in a bout of fire. Uh, so you guys, the other are, guys notice that? You guys are thrown <laughs> backwards by a blast of heat and roll for initiative. So do the people with an 11 not know that that happens? Yeah, do I just not see the door being blown the fuck up in front of me? <laughs> you see the... You see the um, you see the doors blow up, obviously. Um, you just didn't see the dart. Those of you that did see the dart, 
you can give me a dexterity saving throw, um, and that'll help you stay on your feet if you pass the DC. You fail. What's the DC? <laughs> What'd you roll? You rolled a fucking five. The answer is six. Oh, I lied. Yeah, you failed. I rolled an 18. Darn. Uh, Dosh failed. manages to stay on his feet. Hell yeah. All right. Hey, did they give our weapons back? No, you don't have any weapons. Awesome. This is what I want. Engaging the old fisticuffs. All right. Um, initiative rolls. 20. One at a time, please. 20. All right. Uh, Brad, we got a 20. Ben. Five. Five. Or actually, I should say, all right, which of you is Ambionitis and which of you is Brixius? I am... Is this like 21 Jump Street where we accidentally confuse our identities? I think B Rich is Ambionitis. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Matt or Dosh? Seven. Oh, nice roll. All right. And then Revan? Fifteen. Fifteen? Okay. So, Ambionitis, you're up first. You are prone on the ground and the doors have just been blasted open. I want to immediately jump to my feet and scan my surroundings. You see that all of the bouncers are prone. Um, only Dosh has remained on his feet. The doors have been blasted asunder. Uh, one is hanging half off its hinges and um, one of the shelving units has fallen over. Do I see who just blew the fuck out of the door? You do not. Oh, so it was fucking Casper and his annihilation team. Cool. Okay. I want to scan to see if any of these bouncers have a weapon on them. You notice that two of the bouncers um, have swords. Two appear to have daggers. One does not seem to have any sort of weaponry. And you see a pair of brass knuckles on the ground which seem to have fallen out of one guy's pockets. I want to rapidly jump and secure two swords and then lob one to my brother, Rixius, who I hope to God is You looking. can secure one sword. Oh, then fuck him. I just want one. And I want <laughs> you just to... hope he's looking, otherwise you're just flinging a sword at him. Give me a, a strength check. Oh, shit. What'd you roll? 17. 19. He's proficient in it. All right, um, you managed to wrest away the sword from the bouncer. Anything else with your turn? Do I recognize this bouncer as one that has put his hands on me in previous moments? Yes. I kick him in the nutsack. <laughs> All right, well, what's your strength modifier? Four. All right, you deal five damage. Awesome. Right to your Just nuts. Directly to the nutsack. Bitch. Ooh. Revan, it's your turn. You are lying on the ground. Do I see any weapons within arm's reach of me? You see the brass knuckles nearest you. I grab the brass knuckles and try to get on my feet. All right, and you're on your feet. It is now Dosh, or no, actually. Suddenly, from the sides of the doors, you see four hooded and masked figures uh, enter the storage facility, the back room of the casino, and they are going to jump on the guards, and they are all going to try and knock them out. I say we don't get involved. We just let it happen. All right. Only two of them are successful in knocking out their guards with the hilts of their blades. The other two just took a really hefty punch to the temple. Dosh, it's your turn. Hey, guys. What are you doing? Are you saying that to the hooded figures? <laughs> we're, we're just trying to, to leave here. We're not, we're not, you know, crow's head dudes. There's no response from them. Was he just talking to the ground? Like, is, is that, that's, I just imagine him face down talking to the ground. <laughs> I'm still on my feet. Yeah, he's still on his feet. He was the only one that managed to stay on his feet. Okay, now I'm just picturing you standing there, like in an aggressive stance, shouting, "Like, hey. we're not part of the crow's heads. Leave us alone. We don't want any part of this." Like, just aggressively <laughs> screaming. Bricks, Brixius, your turn. Uh, Bricks rhymes with dicks. I would uh, also myself like to stand up because I was falling down. And yes. Yeah, I just want to. I'm gonna I'm gonna move like so if we were right in front of the doorway, I wanna get out from standing directly in front of the doorway, so I wanna move over to the side. Alright, you're gonna put yourself up against the still standing shelving unit. Yeah. Yeah, I will. And uh was there still a sword on the ground? There is a sword on one of the bouncers. 
Okay, actually, I'd like to make an action to grab that sword. All right, give me a strength check to wrestle it away from him. It's a natural 20. It's yours. It's all yours. <laughs> Not only do I wrestle it away, I do it with ease. Oh, this is butter. Okay, smooth. awesome. Wait, can I make a move? Like the doorway, can I make a move up onto the side of the doorway so I'm like posted up against the wall next to the door? Like I'm going to breach it, but there's no door there. And can I just like wait there with my sword? You may. That's what I'm doing. All of the bouncers, uh, they it is their turn. The four that are still left conscious are going to... Two of them are going to stand. Uh, the two that are being attacked are going to try and wrestle their assailants to the ground. Only one is going to be successful. One is rolling on the ground, wrestling with the assailant. The other one is still on the ground with somebody standing over them. And then the two that are standing are going to attack... And they are going to hit the assailants, dealing four damage to each of them. Ambionitis, it's your turn. I take three steps back from where everyone is fighting, and I don't do shit. All right. Not a problem. Revan, your turn. I'm going to follow, and just, yeah, I'm going to back away from everything. All right. Are you moving towards uh, Brixius near the door, or are you moving back with... uh, Ambionitis. Back with Ambionitis. Okay, you're just surveying the scene. And at that moment, another assailant comes through the breached doors and pulls down the pulls back the hood and pulls down the mask. And you see that it is a very sturdy looking woman, and she calls to you, gentlemen, and says, Come with me. We have to leave now. Do we recognize her at all? You do not recognize her. Did she see me when she ran through the door? Her passive perception is a 12. What is your dexterity modifier? Plus two. Okay, yes, she saw you. Just how sturdy are we talking about? Like, are we talking about a little heft or brick shit house? We are talking a little bit of heft, like, um... Yes, Paul, please give me an example without offending somebody. I am begging you. (laughs) We are talking about somebody that knows their way around a sword and has strengthened her core and shoulders so that she winds up being a little bit broader than your average maiden. Broader than your average broad? Yes, (laughs) Yes, (laughs) but not so so burly as to be considered... uh, bodybuilder a brick shit house <laughs> a brick shit house she's a brick shit house <laughs> all right the other assailants are going to try and two or there's one that is still standing over one of the bouncers going to try and knock out that bouncer is going to succeed uh the one that is wrestling is going to try and knock out its bouncer is going to succeed and then um, the two that are being assailed by the standing bouncers, one is going to miss, the other one is going to disengage and start moving back towards the doors. Dosh. I guess I'm going to run out the door real quick, if that's possible. Yes, you're um, (laughs) off to one side. You manage to run past without engaging anybody. Brixius. Your turn. You are alongside the door. Okay. So this woman is still standing there? Yes, and she's slightly... She's motioning with one hand. Her body's turned slightly, so she does see you. All right. Um, I ask her who she is. She says, we don't have time. I'll explain later, I promise. I would like to intimidate her and ask again. This woman is a brick shit house. There is no intimidation going on. Go ahead and and roll for intimidation. Ten. She wets herself laughing at your intimidation. (laughs) (laughs) I couldn't have said it better myself. She says, I'll tell you later. Get out of here. Let's go. All right. I I give the nod to Ambionitis, and then I'm going to slip through the door right to the other side, but then post right back up against the wall. Actually, can I make a perception check of what I see when I enter through the door? Exit the door? Yeah, when I exit the door, can I make a perception check of what I see? Sure, give me a perception check. Or, I mean, can you just tell me what I see? Do I have to make a check? I mean, are you looking for something in particular? 
I, I guess I'm trying to see if I see someone who might be, like, shooting darts at people. Like a sniper. Then yes, you need a perception check. Go ahead and roll. Ah, uh, that's a one. Yeah, you you just walk out and you're kind of looking all around like, oh, I've never been to this part of town before. All right, but I'll still post up against the wall next to the door, just on the opposite side. So I just do a little turn around on the wall. All right, you're not going to be hidden or anything. Um, That's fine. I'm just saying so when she runs back through the door, she might not see me this time. Okay. Ambionitis, your turn. I guess I will follow this sturdy woman and avoid the tussles of these unfortunate bastards that are fighting each other and walk through the door. Do I notice that my brother has hidden or try to hide himself behind this wall? Yes, you definitely saw him because he gave you the nod and then he slipped (laughs) right around the side and you were watching him. Okay, when I walk out of the door i turn and look right at him put my hand up in a wave and go hey brother i see you're behind the wall (laughs) all right revan um oh actually no ambionitis there are still two bouncers that are standing and because you're on the far you're the farthest away from the door you and revan you will need to pass by at least one of them to get to the door so one of them is going to try and swing at you and going to miss wildly so you're just going to sidestep with ease, kind of give him a parry as you go by, and then you're going to wave at your brother very obnoxiously. when you get outside. And then a stand very... there in the doorway with my tongue sticking out and a dumbass-looking smile just like this. Well, we can't see that, but it's a, that's a good, it's a good visual goof for an audio podcast. <laughs> hmm. uh, Revan, um, you, are, you are starting from the same spot as uh, Ambionitis. Do I, I look around trying to see if I can find our weapons that were taken away? Your weapons are at the front of the casino. Fuck. <laughs> um, yeah, I, just, I, I follow the same path that I mean, I just did. All right. Well, you follow the same path. The guy already took his opportunity attack, so you will not be swung at. And then all the assailants are going to... Um, the last one that is still engaged is going to try and knock out a bouncer is going to succeed. So there is one there is one bouncer still active. That guy is now running the opposite direction, screaming at the top of his lungs for help. Back up. Just literally screaming at the top of his lungs. No words, just ah, help! Back up. He's not even explaining the situation because he has no idea what this situation is. Troll in the dungeon. <laughs> That's what I know. Dosh and Brixius uh, Brixius is already outside. Dosh, are you going... You already went outside, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so the assailants and the sturdy woman are quickly ushering you down a side alley. Do you follow them? Why not, I guess? Why not? Uh, you tear down the back alley, you hang a right, and, uh, you go down another alley. You are now on... A, and that alley opens out onto a street that is covered in market stalls. And you see a covered wagon with a horse and a bunch of wares that are moving slowly down the street. The assailants, before exiting the alley, all pull down their masks and throw back their hoods. And you notice that all but one are women. One is a, an elf man. Mm-hmm. And they tell you to get in the back of the wagon. I want to look at the elf man and be like, give him like a, a little like bro nod, be like, nice. <laughs> and then get in the back of the wagon. Who t- Wait, who tells me to get in the back of the wagon? One of the assailants. They all do. They all oh. do. They all flip off their hoods and tell us to get in. I look at... Mainly, mainly the, um, I mean, the the woman who you first saw. The sturdy She's the bro. one that tells you, yeah, she's the one that tells you, get in the wagon. And then everybody else is motioning for you. Come on, let's go, let's go. All right, I want to get in the wagon, but as I pass the guy, the one guy, I look at him, hold my hand up and go, nice. I got to get in the wagon. Everybody in the wagon? I walk up, size up the dude, stand right in his face, look him up and down real quick, give him a quick nod, and then get in the wagon. (laughs) But I want to be, like, so close, he, like, feels my nostril breath hitting him in the face. And, Revan, are you getting in the wagon as well? I am. Okay, cool, without sizing them up. That's nice. What's the worst going to happen? <laughs> All right, and so you guys are sitting in the back of the wagon for um, 
the better part of about five minutes before you hear a large commotion out in the street. And peeking through the gaps in the fabric of the wagon, you can see a bunch of burly bouncers all come tearing down the alley. Some of them have lumps already forming on the sides of their heads. Most of them are carrying swords open. And they start throwing people left and right, looking for who you can only assume is you. Uh, They go off left and right down the street, and then the cart starts moving. At that point, the head assailant seems to relax a bit, and she, when she when she sees that the the crow's heads have gone down <laughs> uh, various sides of the streets, and she says, oh, "Well, I'm sure that you guys are all wondering what this is about." Uh, oh, not really. But if you want to tell me, that'd be cool. Well, uh, I'm sure that you just met Roscoe, did you not? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, we'll yeah. See you. yeah. Yeah. So I'm guessing that he, um, if he lets you live and without a beating, that he's got a job for you. Yeah. Is that right? S- yeah. We're supposed to murder somebody aggressively. You remember the name? Can you tell me what your name is first? I asked you earlier, and you told me you would tell me later. I will tell you, but I need to know who did he, who did he put the hit on? Some guy named Joe. Wayona. Wayona? Some guy named Joe? Yeah, Joe. All right, Joe give... Mama. <laughs> <laughs> Here I was about to have you roll a deception check and everything. <laughs> Fuck you. All right. So, Wait, so I definitely don't recognize this person, right? You definitely don't recognize this person. Wait. No. Dosh, give me, give me um, a perception check. 16. You think you may have seen her in passing, but you do know where you think you would have seen her. Which would be... <laughs> uh, headphones off, everybody else. You recognize this person as possibly being a member of Wilhelmina's group. All right, cool. That's kind of what I figured anyways. <laughs> headphones back on. So the lady asks again, I need to know, before we go any further, what's the name of the hit? I mean, I'm sure you can guess. I'd rather not assume. You know what happens when you assume. It rhymes with <laughs> hill and via, but put that together, it starts with will and ends with... Hemenia? Hemina? All right. Will. The hits on The, wills, the hits on Wilhelmina? Wilhelmina, yeah. Yeah, that one. I mean, the crow's heads didn't get to where they're at without knocking off a few randos, or not so randos, some very powerful people. I just wanted to make sure that we were bringing in the right people. My name. I swear to God. I swear to God. (laughs) What is your name? (laughs) Your name, son. What is your name? This is Taylor. Beef Wellington. I'm a woman. Thank you very much. Beef Wellington? My name is Natalia. And I work for Wilhelmina. It's not Becky. No, it's Natalia. Or Brittany. S- Sue, Brittany, Tammy Lynn, Tammy, Karen. for God's sakes. Yeah, fucking Karen. Natalia? Natalia, yes. With a short A. I'm Brixie, it's nice to meet you. Dosh, I know you. We haven't met officially, but I know you. And you're the bounty hunter, aren't you? I am. She looks at she looks at you, Revan. What's your name? Revan Dawn Treader. Revan? Hopefully, after you talk to my boss, you'll see that uh, you've been working for the wrong side. Well, Mama always said you can never trust a guy who can't scratch his own nuts. <laughs> <laughs> and whose side are you on exactly? I work for Wilhelmina. No, I get I th- that, but... I think it's about time that somebody shows these crow's heads that they can't control this entire valley. How did you blow up the door? Um, at that very moment, the flap to the where the wagon and the bench where the guy driving the cart sits, that flap flips open, and you see a uh, halfling head pop around the corner, and it's Taylor. God, God damn fucking damn it. She says, hey guys, that was me. Hi, Taylor. She's she's driving the cart right now. Oh, she's actually driving it? Okay, well, in that case, if she just turns around... Hi, 
Taylor. <laughs> Pretty much. What's up, Taylor? I was sniping from the other building. That was you. That shot the yep. fucking blow dart in the dude's eye? Yep. Did that, and then threw a fireball at those doors. Woo! What, what if I was the one who opened that door, Taylor? Did you think Ooh, about that? <laughs> Don't worry. I'm a professional. And then she closes the, the flap. You're a professional blow dart shooter in the eye of people? <laughs> That's impressive. Where did you get certified at? I need to know. Blowing skills. I look at Natal- <laughs> oh, she's Wait look at a minute. Natalia. Are you guys all prostitutes? <laughs> <laughs> Not all of us. And that Wait, is the elf man still here? Yeah, that came from the elf man. The elf man just said, "Not all of us." My man. So what do you do? <laughs> oh no, I'm not talking about me. Natalia's not. Not my man no more. <laughs> I asked Natalia where you where she found the fucking sharpshooter named Taylor. Oh, I don't know. She came to us from the crow's head. She came over. She came with Wilhelmina. And her name's Taylor. Yeah, and she knows what she's doing. Can I ask Taylor where she came from? I'm sure you can ask her all the questions you want after we've talked to Wilhelmina. All right. And uh, the wagon continues out of the city, and uh, you the buildings become more sparse. You are traveling for the better part of the day, and uh, you notice that you're now in farmland, rolling pastures, uh, lots of crops, Wheat and corn, barley and oats. And uh, you pull up to a farmstead and Natalia says, this is our stop. Everybody out. Okay. Uh, you see that the farmstead is a fairly uh, decent sized home with a large barn. And you see uh, several horses and oxen out to graze in a nearby paddock and feeding one of the horses is a very beautiful woman with a very stern face. She turns and she says, Dosh, it's so good to see you again. Hey, girl. What's up? Natalia, I see you brought other friends. someone to see me. Well, it is good to see you again, but uh, I- I'm afraid we're going to have to talk about that information you sold me. <laughs> I got outbid. But uh, um, uh, we can talk about that later. Let me first. Let me meet your friends. I am Wilhelmina. Reverend Don Treader. Hey. And you are Don Treader. Welcome to my farm. And you, half orcs. My name, Miss, is uh, it's Brixius. Brixius, Brixius. Hammerbottom. Brixius, it's a pleasure to meet you. And you, sir. My name is Ambionitis Hammerbottom. Sorry. And ambionitis. Please, let us let us get you a meal, and then we can talk about how we're going to take back this valley from underneath the power of the crow's heads. And uh, we'll cut it there. Right out. All right, so, uh, we had our first... Well, no, we didn't. This wasn't our first fight. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't really fight anyone. No, you didn't do much fight. I don't think any of us fighting. actually made a swing at anyone. I'm real bummed out I lost my sword and my bow. Yeah, you guys are out, out your weapons. Oh, oh no, my boy. dagger and 1d8 crossbow. <laughs> I really only rolled the dice like three or four times tonight, and I don't think I rolled above a six. <laughs> yeah, you did. At least twice. Well, I know his yeah. initiative was only five. Um, rolled a nat 20. Oh, yeah, I rolled one nat 20. I rolled a initiative of five, I rolled a natural one, and I rolled a three. So. Solid. One, three, five, 20, I'll take it. <laughs> All right, well, uh, next week we will continue with the stories of Dosh Johnson, Ambionitis, and Brixius Hammerbottom, and Revan Dawn Treader as they discuss tactics with Wilhelmina and find out a little bit more about what's going on in the uh, Salt Mine Valley. Until then, if you want to get in touch with us, we are at deathsavingbros.com. You can follow us at Death Saving Bros on Twitter. And you can follow me personally at HP Camper. You can follow me personally at Benfro15. I'm at B underscore R I C H A zero. No, 918. 918. Yeah, yeah. it's 918. Fuck that zero. Fuck it. No zeros. No zeros. The underscore and a B 
and R-I-C-H-A, no zero, but 918, once again, no zero, but a B, and an underscore, and a 918. <laughs> I don't have a Twitter. Which we need to fix. Yeah, I probably need to. I'll fix that sooner or later. And this is Matt. Don't follow me. I'll follow you. <laughs> All right, until next time. You know, I I do want a really good tagline and um I don't know. Let's let's crowdsource this real quick. What do you guys think? Would you rather say what do we say to death or would you rather say heads will roll? I uh or do you have something sec- better? Was the second one heads will roll? Yeah. And the something first one like that. Was, what do you say to death? We can do it like a chant where you go, what do you say to death? And then all of us go, heads will roll all at the same time. Yeah, I enjoy the companions, the companionship of females. Yeah, dude, trust me. I really hoped it was serious. Just so no, I that's the kind of stuff that uh, I saw some kids playing D&D the other day in the student center. That's the kind of stuff that they would do. And you could just tell by looking at them. That they fuck? <laughs> yeah, they fuck. Let me tell you. <laughs> I can Are we the kind of D and D players that dunk other D and D players' heads in the toilets? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the other thing. Uh, I was thinking. So last time I said, "What do we say to death?" And Eric, thank God, got it and said, "Not today." But I was thinking, uh, "What do we say to death?" Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. I mean, I yeah, I'm. I'm cool with that. What do we say yeah. to death? And then one of us just says, "Go fuck yourself." Or do we yeah, all? Yeah, sure. Just, or do we all say it like? And it just will overlap and sound horrible, but it'll be funny. Hey, go fuck yourself. All right. We are the Death Saving Bros, and until next time, what do we say to death? Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. Three, two, one. Christ, Eric. Oh. No, I... I legit did oh, you. Oh, wait, it. we're not going to start <laughs> yelling, Eric. Oh, don't. I know you're upset. <laughs> Let's yeah. not do that. <laughs> Remove the mic. I'll start y- from singing your in you if you guys say that again. Damn it. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, Sorry, this is actually really funny. It's not funny. My shit hurts. <laughs> I'm I'm more I'm more laughing at the fact that Ben just grabbed Brad's jaw and shoved him towards the mic. Let's <laughs> <laughs> adjust this then, so I don't have to fucking giraffe neck. <laughs> what are you guys laughing about? We went to Matt's screen, and he's just looking at the camera, pounding a beer. <laughs> <laughs> We literally switched over to his screen, and he's staring at the camera, <laughs> raises the beer slowly to his lips, and then proceeds to put his head entirely upside down in order to drink the beer. I, I drooled on myself. It just caught me very off guard. <laughs> Speaking of which, I need another one. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, we haven't even started yet, and I'm already almost hurting. What was that sentence that just came out of your mouth? He's looking for it now. I heard my ass goes meow, and I was really confused. We're out. <sighs> boner, 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 boner. Fuck boner, off, fuck boner, off, boner, fuck boner. off, fuck off. Idiot. Now he's definitely going to know where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> What's the question, Eric? Oh, uh, you never answered a question about the nuts get cut off. <laughs> oh. That's some pretty important information. Uh, I guess you'll have to wait and find out in a future episode. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yank of the pants off. It's a really good return. You finally figure out that the guy actually cuts his nuts when he scratches his sack with rings on his hand. That's what we <laughs> offer. What does other podcasts offer? Bitch. So, um, let's go ahead and cut the recordings. Cut the recording, asshole. Well, this is where we get all the funny shit. Jazz hands. Some of the sounds and background music in this production are copyright material. 
The Death Saving Bros theme song is an abridged version of the song Run by Kai Angle and sourced from the Free Music Archive. This track is used with permission under Creative Commons Attribution License 4.0. You can read the full license at creativecommons.org slash licenses slash buy slash 4.0 slash legal code.